You're watching Rock Titan TV, featuring Waylon Rivers of A Killer's Confession. Hey everybody, I'm Scotty J. You are watching Rock Titan TV. I am here with Waylon Rivers. You know this dude from Mushroom Head. He's got a phenomenal new project going on though. A Killer's Confession. Thank you. Waylon, how you doing, man? I'm good, man. I'm good. Other than the fact I had to get up at, what time did I get up? Three? Yeah. And go shovel snow here in Philly. It was just, it was cold. Yeah, yeah. And, cold. You're, and you're originally from North Carolina, yes, right? Yes, So, you know. Yes, sir. You wouldn't get too much snow down here. Well, actually, where I'm from in the mountains, we do get snow. So. Oh, yeah? Okay. So I'm pretty right. handy with a shovel. You know, come back, rush back to get here. Thank you for having us. Yeah. Thank you for taking the time yeah. and... and uh, Thank you for having me in your studio. Here we are. Uh, hey, know, this, this is, is where it all happens right here. You all know. the magic. You know, none of us know how to play them. Yeah. But we um, we try. You know, we make a lot of noise. You know, mom yells, neighbors cuss, cops come. But then, then we get out. Yeah. <laughs> now, you did just move not too long ago. Are you settling down all right? Um, as Sounds good like as that. I can. I yeah. love it here. It's quiet. You know, I, can, I feel like I can plant myself and blossom. And I really, really like Philly. Do you? Yes, I do. Got you haven't been here long enough, man. <laughs> <laughs> Go to Cleveland. Cleveland's amazing, but, you know, right? once yeah. you get used to it, it's, it's like anywhere. Okay. All right. So, Unbroken. Yes, sir. Came out last spring, I guess. Yeah? Yes. And, May. Uh, okay. All right. I was, yeah, I was thinking April, May. All right. And you've got your official music video out there, Rebirth, and then there's a couple of lyrical videos out there. How have your fans received this new project of yours? Um, first of all, they're not finding it. Yeah, well, they are, but the ones that are finding it are really loving it. They're they're seeing that I'm like taking what they loved in Mushroom Head, what I did, and I'm just amplifying it by a hundred. But in reality, I'm doing what Three Quarters Dead would have turned into, uh, you know, over a decade ago. Now, see, you're being humble. You're being humble about this. But I mean, you know. You, you're the singer from Mushroom Head for 11 years, you know, arguably during some of the greatest years that the band ever thank had, you, you know, you. despite, yeah, I mean, they had turnover, you know, there were a number of moving parts, but you were constant. Thank you. Uh, you know, I mean, seriously, so I have to imagine that even though you've moved on from them and you've got a killer's confession now, you've got to have a slew of fans. I mean, I, how could you not? Mushroom Head made me, and I'm not going to lie about that. Uh, Mushroom Head gave me the platform to be seen, to be heard, and I thank them for that, but my time there is done. And, uh, you know, I wasn't feeling it when I left. Um, I wish them nothing but the best. Uh, but, you know, and I thank them because I have all you because of it. Right, so, right. Uh, hats off to you. Right on, right on. Well, now, it, it's funny, though, because, I mean, I love what you're doing with The Killer's Confession, and the sound is, well, we were talking about it earlier. I mean, it's, it's quite a bit different, you know, and I would expect as much, but was that something when you were going off and you knew that, you know, you were going to be doing something new? <sighs> Did you want to take any of what you had with Mushroom Head with you? I mean, were you kind of thinking that you were going to keep that similar style no, of metal? No, no, or, no, 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 okay. no. This was, uh, I, I felt like it was time to grow up. Yeah. It was time to start putting lyrics into songs that, you know, had more meaning, had more feeling. I, it was time to, like, really just let the music live through me and, like, push that, that my soul and what was really bothering me. Because, I mean, I'm not alone. There's a million people out there that have the same problems, same, same issues, right. same depression, you know. And I just felt it was time to grow up. You know, take off the mask and be Waylon Revis. Don't be Waylon Revis. Right Rich. on, right um, on, right on. You know, especially the Unbroken is a very angry album. We were talking about that. Yeah, you, yeah. you were asking me some questions before. Sure. Yeah, with Rebirth. Yeah. Yes. Um, but, um, you know, when it got to Angel and stuff, it was like really soul seeking and, and healing. Um, you know, it's like with Angel on the outside, I dealt with a very traumatic part of my life, leaving Mushroom Head. Mm. And, uh, you know, I've never wrote like that. So, you guys, I hope you enjoy it. And if you really like it, I'll continue to do it. And that was just kind of a test. But it was time to grow up, I think, as a musician and use um, my platform to actually elevate instead of just bullshit, you know, popping, popping caps in people's asses and getting high. You know, that's been said and done, and I hate today's music. There's yeah. no lyrical content. Well, you, well, I'm glad you brought up, you know, just the, the fans and, you know, the fact that you're growing up, you know, kind of evolving and, you know, you've gone through an epiphany of sorts, you know, over the last year or so. Um, I know that the way you reach out to your fans, that, that was something very important to you. Yes. Um, I've always believed without no fans, there is no band. Yeah, right. And they, you guys have gave me a platform and you've made my dream come true. 
and I owe you everything. You, you'll never have to buy anything to meet me. You'll never have to wait in line. You know, maybe sometimes, you know, that just happens. But, like, if you ever see me out, walk up. I'll be more than happy to talk to you. The fans are the whole reason I do this. I would rather see them smile than get paid. Uh, it's like, listen to lyrics, enjoy the music, and that's it. Because there's nothing else to have, you know? It's like the 80s are over. Right. Nobody buys music. <laughs> Uh, it's just one of the situations. Well, you guys need to go out and definitely buy Unbroken. Well, thank you. You know, get it. Download it, Spotify, all that. I don't care anymore. Yeah. Like, I'm to that point, I don't want the million dollars. I want to change somebody. And yeah. that's the, I'm going to get something to drink. Get please, though. <laughs> but uh, um, I want you guys to feel it, and I want to, to help you grow. Uh, you, you remember that album that like you listen to when you're in your darkest spots? That's where I'm at writing wise. I okay. want to write those albums for people. All right. Well, heck, I mean, a lot of times when, you know, I know, especially for you singer songwriters, you know, when you're feeling down or, you know, when you're going through extraordinary emotional, you know, times of your life, I mean, that's when you really create some of your greatest work. And, you know, again, we were talking earlier, specifically Rebirth, and of course, you know, since we're all about music videos and music television, and trying to bring that element back to the public. Please, God. And, and yeah, right? Please, God. Right? I love the music video. What happened to that Friday night show where they, uh, it was like ABC or NBC, they played videos. Yeah, like, yeah, starting yeah. at midnight. Well, I was well there was Headbangers Ball and Head I mean, all that good ball. stuff, yeah. But I remember, like, syndicated TV used to do it. Like, yeah. well, you, know, you had Soul Train and all that shit. Sure, too. sure. And, uh, sure. the day that is over, you get off YouTube, get Give me a TV show. Give me somebody giving me something. We're working something. on it, dude. We're working on it. I'm trying. I'm trying. Please. Yes. Yes. So Rebirth. Um, that, to me, just looking at the lyrics, you yes. know, and then, of course, listening to, you know, and just the song in general, it seemed to be very powerful, very emotional. There was a lot going on. Can you kind of talk about uh, some Rebirth of that? was from my mother. Yeah. Um, my mother passed away when I was 13, and she left me. It's like, you cannot harbor hate. And this woman was 39 when she passed. And yeah, you know, she really, you know, I dealt with death from an early age, but she taught me, it's like, son, my life's over and I've resented and been hateful to people all my life. Um, there's no need for it. There's no need to hold that grudge. There's, you've got to let things go. And I know it's hard. Trust me, I know it's hard. <laughs> um, and I fight it every day, but rebirth is just that, is hating me really fulfilling you? Is, is it really fulfilling me to hate on you and and to throw that shade on you, it's not. And and rebirth really is being reborn from that mistake and realizing that it's it's one of those situations where, you know, it's not helping me. It's hurting me in the long run. Okay. Um, but you know, a lot of people point fingers and you know they think they want. To, I'm talking about. I'm talking about myself. I'm talking about me holding that hate and ruining my own life. Mm. And I, it's um, you know. It's hard, you know, to, to actually take responsibility for your own faults. And I think rebirth is really a testament of how I, like, okay, I fucked up. I fucked up bad, and I'm, you know, I'm going to learn from it, and I'm going to move from it. And that's what Unbroken is really about, the whole album, not just rebirth. Right. It's about learning from those mistakes, learning from that arrogance, learning that you're not a god, learning that you're nothing special. I didn't solve world hunger, hunger, but you goddamn thought I, I did by talking to me. Right, um, right. It was just, you know, Unbroken is just, you know, how many times can I fall down and get up and, and become a new man? And if you listen to the whole album, it's all about that forgiveness. And all about that, you know, being able to get up, pick myself up, and love myself again. Because that's something I stopped doing. By, by the end, I just stopped caring. Yeah. And, and now I do. I, I do care now. I will say yeah. that. No, well, I'll tell you what. It's funny. Because uh, when I was talking to my guy, Tom, earlier, you know, it's like, oh, man. You know, I'm going to hang out with Waylon Revis, man. You know, and, and I honestly I didn't know what to expect yet because I'd seen all your Mushroom Head videos, you know. So I'm yes. thinking, man, this dude's got to be freaking intense, you know. Like, he's got to be over the top, you know. And then it's like, man, what, what a Southern gentleman, you know. It's yeah. like he's just the ultimate Southern gentleman. But I know that, you know, obviously you've had a lot of success in your music career. I mean, yes, I you've have. been at the apex 
you know? And God, can I get back, please? You know? <laughs> and, and, and it's just interesting, you know, to talk with you now and, and just to get your take because, you know, to me, I would think that, you know, once you're on top, you're always on top, you know? Mm -hmm. And I mean, there's nothing bringing you down. No room for self-reflection. I don't need to change. Why would I need to change? I've been there, done that, and I'm going to keep doing what I've always done to stay there. And here you've got this totally different perspective. Like, really, I mean, talking to you, it's like, you know, I'm, I'm talking to this guy who wants to reinvent himself, and I'm thinking, why? Why? Because I was living the wrong life. Okay. I was doing it for the wrong reasons. Yeah. Um, there's got to be more. Yeah. It, it's not about this pedestal. It's about what the joy you can bring in someone's life. Yeah. And I learned this. When I left Mushman, I don't know if you know this, I worked with children. I, I did went, not know I went that. to a group wow. home for a year, wow. and I worked with children who have been through uh, rape and and drug abuse and sex trafficking and wow. like murder. Wow. What got you into that? Uh, a friend of mine. He's like, "Well, you got the mentality. Go try this out." And wow. I started out just as a you know you know a, a counselor, and then I moved into a manager, got my own cottage, and by the end of it, I was. They taught me that life could be so much worse. That had to be it humbling, incredibly very. Wow. Um, and my, I love my girls. You know who you are. I can't talk about them because of uh, HIPAA laws, but uh, I love those girls. And those girls taught me that my life was good mm. and that I had nothing to be ashamed of and I had nothing to hold my head down and to pick myself up and put myself back on that platform and help another child like that. And that's really where I'm at now in my life. I, I don't want to write stuff that's going to harm you. Yeah. I don't want to write stuff that's going to make you question, you know, stupid shit. I want, I want stuff to, like, make you think about can life be better? Can I make my life better by helping someone else? You know what? This is so important. And everybody, I, I really hope you're paying attention to Waylon right now because we've lost so many artists just over the last few years. You know, guys that literally, you know, from the outside looking in again, I had this totally, you know, fantastical perception of what it must be like to be you, you know. But then at the same time, these, these guys out here, again, you think they've got it all. And they're ending their lives like you would just never possibly imagine that they would do something like that. And here you are with the most uplifting perspective on this. It's like, you know what? <laughs> Things might have, you know, I, I've had my trials and tribulations. I'm not going to let that keep me down. I want to have a more positive message. I mean, that's awesome. Well, Rocky said it best. I'm here in Philly, so I'm going to say it. Right it's on, not how many times you can get knocked down. It's how many times you can get back up. <laughs> and I want to run the steps. Really? Somebody's got to take me to run the Rocky Steps. <laughs> Dude, the art museum's right down the road. You got to get your... Gotta get your gotta oh, get your I'll, it'll be funny. I'll be yeah. like a quarter of the way up with a bucket puking. Yeah, go. <laughs> and then get up there. The statue's not there anymore. I need an either. oxygen tank. Is the statue there or no? Uh, I think the, the statue's at the art museum. Yeah. If it yeah. ain't there, I'm going to pitch yeah, 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 it. I, I ran all the way here for Rocky and he don't exist. I think it is. Yeah, I've been down to the art museum in about a year, so I don't know if they moved it or not. But... Uh, one thing I got to ask you, because, you know, again, you've got this unique perspective, you know, for a guy who, who's been, you know, where you are and where you are now. How important is it to surround yourself with the right people? Because in the oh industry that you're in, man, you've, you've always got people sucking at the power teat, man. Like, they all want to be in your entourage, you know, when you're at the top, you know, I mean. And even then, there's a lot of negative influences out there, man. And yes, that could have such a huge impact on you, because you musicians are so emotional as it is. Oh, we're dumbs. We're dumb. Don't let any musician tell you they're smart. We're all stupid. <laughs> We're influenced. We will try anything once. No. Um, it's important. You will become a product of your environment. Yeah. You right. surround yourself with negativity, you become negative. If you sound, uh, uh, surround yourself with positive, you become positive. Um, you know, it's all, you know, you will become what you don't want if you surround yourself with it. Like, if you run with the wrong gang, you run with the wrong gang. You end up being an arrogant, prick, womanizing, you know, jack-off. And I don't want that. I want people to come to my show. I want them to have a good time. I want them to leave. Thank you for giving me the hour to entertain you, but I want to be around good people, and I want people to leave with that good feeling because there's, n you know, there's no reason to be... I didn't do anything special. I got lucky. I had a... I guess a good voice and people want to hear it. And yeah, well, it's a lot different. It's a lot different, you know, with a killer's confession. Thank you. And uh, I, like I said earlier, I mean, I, I, I like it better. You know, I mean, Thank I think you. it showcases more of your of your, of your range well, and really who you are. 
Well, with, with the Kills of Confession, I got some bucket lists, though. You know, I got Brian Welch playing on the actual song. Right. That was like... I, okay, that, so let's go there, yeah. That was like, to me, you know, it's like, oh my God. Ahead, man. It's fucking corn. I'm playing... It's like, it's our song, but to me, it's like, corn's on my album. I'm playing a corn song, because a Kills of Confession really does sound like corn, because it was a tribute to him. And, okay, uh, all right. And to have that, I've got to do some bucket lists, but I really got to push vocally. I didn't get told no. I was like, I want to try this. I'm going to see if people like it. And did you? <laughs> um, well, like I said, I mean, it just it showcases so much more of what you've got, you know, in that neck of yours, you know, because obviously with Mushroom Head, very distinctively different style of metal. Oh, you well, know? you got three singers. You well, know, sure, for, sure. You, but just the, the parts that you did, you know, specifically, you know, I mean, it wasn't necessarily, I, would, I don't want to say melodic is, you know, what you're doing with The Killer's Confession, but, you know, still, I mean, I think you're showcasing more of your, you know, again, you know. Well, with, with the, the big thing, and I'm going to be honest, the big thing about this, I get to get my idea out. Yeah. I actually get to be like, okay, I'm going to run about this, and then we'll go here, and we'll go here, and do we'll you, tell the story. Do you have a lot more freedom now? Oh, I have all the freedom. I'm the boss. Yeah. <laughs> Um, with this, well, like with Mushroom Age, you had to go through Steve. Okay. You, it, you know, right. it was yes or no, it worked or didn't. Um, but you had parts. You didn't have a song. You had sure. a part. Sure, sure. And that's why a lot of the Mushroom Age stuff sounds like it does. It's like, right. it sounds like it's going to be like this, you know, but the lyrics change and it's right. like, it's, they're cool, they work together, but they're, it's kind of confusing. There's right. a reason. We wasn't in the same room when we wrote it. Right, right. Yeah, no, it was a cast of very different types of folks, for sure. Oh, and some yeah. some of the shit still. I'm like, what the hell does that mean? I I, I wrote it, and I'm yeah. like, what? Is, it just what was this? <laughs> it's yeah. like, am I trying to be confusing? So, so you're starting out Killer's Confession. Obviously, you came out with Unbroken last yes. spring, like we talked about. And right out of the gate, you know, you're starting to, you know, get some acknowledgement from the community out there. I know that you're on Dave Ellison's record label. They, they well, I was. Up. It was right. You were. Yeah, I was. And they picked you up, and you've launched a couple singles since then, but. Yeah, but I mean, what was it like for you, I guess, to, uh, you know, still be received by people in the community? Thank God. You know? Thank yeah. God my mistakes didn't shun me from the one thing I love to do. Um, and I, when I say I love to do what I do, I love it. Um, it's a part of me. Uh, going out and seeing those kids' faces. Yeah. Whether they buy a shirt, whether they buy the CD, just seeing them, like, gives me fulfillment and gives me purpose. Um the, I'm thankful that I was welcome back in the industry because it could have been very ugly and been like, fuck you. you know? Yeah. And uh, thank you. <laughs> That's yeah. all. The thank you. You know, interesting segue, you know, because you brought up, you know, again, the kids. And we kind of talked about this earlier. And obviously you spent that year, you know, working with, uh, you know, youths that, you know, got a variety of different issues. But in the music scene now, you don't necessarily see that real young crowd, you know, at metal shows. No, you don't. If they're all on Facebook, get the fuck off Facebook. Go out to a show. You might meet somebody with, with the same interests. You might meet your best friend. You might meet your wife. You don't know. Go to the show because, I mean, that's real social networking. You go out and meet people in your community, and you already got something in common. You're at the same show. Right. You like the same style of music. Start there. Um, but kids, no, they don't come out to music like they used to. Yeah. And it's sad. Yeah, yeah. I mean, do you have any thoughts on maybe why? Um, just internet. Yeah. Internet. Uh, there's too much on the net. You got Xbox, PlayStation, um, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, sex chat. I mean, Snapchat. <laughs> yeah, right. uh, um, <laughs> let me tell you something, guys. If you do the stuff you do on Snapchat in person, it might work. And now you know. Yeah, let me ask you about that since you brought up the internet too, because I mean, yeah, I'm dealing with the same struggles as a lot of folks out there are, and I mean, it's so smoke and mirrors. You don't know what's real and what isn't, yet there are the powers that be out there that are just looking at numbers. You know, all they care about is how many hits you got on Facebook, how many hits you got on YouTube, how many hits you got on Instagram, and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, there were a lot of successful bands out there that existed before there were any such metrics in place. Those things yes. didn't even apply. What do you think about all that crap? Fuck it. It don't matter. Right? Um, you know, th they're called bots. You can pay for them. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. th it's, they're they don't exist. It's just a click. It's just a stupid sign that's got a picture on it. it. It's not that important. What's important is the album good or does it suck? Do they entertain you or do they bore you? It's not what's on Facebook and it's not what's on Twitter and it's not what's on Instagram. That's just, you know, 
that's contrived and, and, and forced down your throat to say, hey, my life's perfect. And it, oh, look how cool I am as a pitcher. And you yeah. assume, but it's still not the same. Um, those things are, <laughs> it's not real. It's a joke. It's it's a, a joke. It is a joke. And you have to use it. So yeah. hang my head. I'm just as guilty. You have to. It's yeah. a, today's thing. But in my opinion, are they important? No. The, the accolades from that crap, screw it. No. It's nothing. I mean, even in terms of making a career out of it anymore, to be a career musician, which certainly you have been. Um, but, you know, again, you know, even then we're talking about, you know, music sales, record sales, you know, merch and touring. Obviously, a lot of that comes in the form of merchandise, t-shirts, you know, record sales. Thank you for buying the cleanest yeah, shirts, yeah, guys. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, it's all in that. It's like there's no money in record sales. Everything goes to paying for gas, paying for crew, paying for band members, paying for merch, yeah. getting there, keeping maintenance, buying all this stuff. Yeah, um, not cheap. Not cheap at all. Yeah. Uh, the 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 days of a label giving you tour support over. They don't happen anymore. Um, it's just one of those things, guys. It's, uh, you know, thank you. But yet again, to me saying thank you to yeah, the fan. Because yeah, if y'all don't yeah. buy that crap, well, it's not crap, my merchandise, yeah. if y'all don't buy it, I don't get to continue because that's the only way I make money. Well, let's talk about them buying tickets to your shows. When is Killer's Confession touring? What's going uh, on here? Don't know right now. We've got new uh -huh. management. Mark Aberson, uh okay. is our new manager, and we're just setting ourselves up. I don't want a headline. I want to open. I want to, I want to be an opening act. Yeah. I want to go in and, and play with bands I've always wanted to play with and, you know, be the opening act because I've headlined for years. Right. And this band is truly not ready for it. I've got one album. You can't headline off nine songs. Sorry. <laughs> and we're not good at covers. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, man. So I guess, well, I mean, so if you're doing a show right now, you got Unbroken. What other kind of material? Do you have any new materials since uh, you uh, released that? Well, I got Angel and I Wish. Okay, right. And right. Uh, we're talking about doing some covers. I always want to do like uh, Deathlock. Uh, uh, mermaid. Yeah. <laughs> just, uh, well, if you do it, you got to do it right. You know, I mean, there's this. <laughs> well, I mean, seriously, I mean, there's those old classics. You know, some of them can be turned around. Obviously, uh, what know. other song was I wanting to cover? Uh, Nights in White Satin. Dig it, dude. Dude, I want to do that. Um, yeah. be Pepper cool. from uh, the Butthole Surfers. <laughs> You know, I'm Southern. I can talk about Texas. Yeah, they're all right on Love Island. They're doing it in Texas. Um, right. What's another one I would like to cover? Yeah. I'm thinking, what have I been singing here lately? Good Lord. That's cool, though, man. That's funny. I can't even think of it right now. <laughs> uh, uh, so, so, but touring is definitely on the horizon. Touring is on the horizon. About. When we get down here, I'll show you the tour van. All right. I'll show cool. you LeBron cool. James's oh, we have to, van. We'll have to grab the camera there. And, oh, we uh, can tell you do it. We'll, is we'll it clean? To. Oh, oh, good. Check I'm out. getting the no, no. Oh, yeah. Stinky. No, no. <laughs> I'm getting the look, it's huh? stinky. Uh huh. <laughs> that's, that's what tour life is like. It stinks a lot in here. A lot of smelly farts. So this is the AKC, right? Huh? This is the AKC machine. All right. Now there's there's a backstory to this. I understand. This was LeBron James's limo van. As you see, there's the limo piece. Get out of here, man. There's the limo piece. Uh, Xbox One, 44 inch flat screen TV. It's got a better system in it than most clubs. Um, satellite TV. Uh, all the chairs are vibrating heat, lays yeah, out in the wow. back, and only had 15,000 miles on it when I bought it. How in the world did you acquire this thing? Look, uh, he had it when he was in the heat uh, down in Miami, brought back to Ohio, and one of my investors found it for me, and this was the birth of AKC, how we got around. <laughs> wow. No more uh, RV. <laughs> this, this is traveling in style, I should say. This is awesome. Like You got the, you know, a movie and video games help a seven-hour trip. Any day of the week. Right. Any right. day of the week. That but, is no joke. But if you see this bad boy um, in your town, stay away from yeah. it. <laughs> this is our new drummer, Morgan. What's up, Morgan? How we doing, guys? Who are you sponsored by? SJC. How long have you been sponsored by them? About a year. Not that I long. didn't even have a sponsorship until I was 28. And you're how old? 22. What the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but this is our new drummer. The kid's awesome, guys. Go check him out on Facebook, girls. He is handsome. Yeah, he's yeah. taken, but he's handsome. <laughs> so, so music videos. This is going to be his chance to, you know, get involved in some new official music videos. And of course, to date, you got the, you know, a couple lyrical ones out there. But Rebirth really is your only one video official <laughs> music video out there. Are we thinking about doing another official music yes. video for that album? Yes, I want to do a video for Angel on the Outside. I okay. did the lyric. Okay. But I think a story needs to be told. I want a mini movie. I want you to watch it, not just to be a video, but I want you to watch it for the story. 
I'm gonna see if this guy can act. If he's this good looking, I maybe I can send him to Hollywood or yeah, something. No, no, no one wants to see us old guys anymore, man. No, man, I'm know. I'm old and you know forty, and he's twenty two. Need to whip young. out the babe magnets. Are you a babe this. magnet? The drummers always get the girls, man. Well, I don't even know why I'm asking, How did you, man. Look, look, man, he got the hair. What happened to your hair, man? Shut yeah. up. Yeah. <laughs> twenty years later, man. Yeah. Enjoy it while you got it. No. This is the stress of the road. That's this it, is yeah. your future, son. <laughs> This is your future. But yeah, yeah. seriously, not drummers, you guys always get the checks. That's probably why you became a drummer, isn't it? Do you yep. play any other instruments or do you just play drums? I play guitar once do in a you? while, yeah. But okay. I proceeded in drums more, so. Okay. He's All a right. badass. Yeah. How long have you been playing? Um, Going on like eight years. Oh, wow. Eight, ten years. Wow. No, no, no. I just got uh, the sign language. You started when you so, were three. No, no, no sooner did you put down the pacifier, you I picked played up the around since I was three. Huh? I took it seriously about. 12, 13 right. years old. So. Right. Now, had you been in many bands before Killer's Confession? Yeah, this will be my fifth band. Wow. But this is this is definitely the bigger band, for sure. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> big step. It ain't yeah, no yeah. big band. I'm, he's playing yeah. with a dumb redneck that calls himself Cletus at the time. <laughs> he He's good. He's good. He, he's, the, he's the star. This is the new star. I'm going to put him in front of everything. I'm going to put him on cereal boxes, milk cartons, T-shirts, and I'm going to sell this cute little face. Nice, nice. <laughs> Maybe you'll send my kids to college. Well, a well, little exploitation never hurt anybody, <laughs> right? Nah, this is, Morgan, it was either this or the military. Yep. This. Yeah, I, I'll right. give you this. I'll give you this lot of hope. At, at the end of our tunnel, there's no grenade. You get yeah. to keep your hair. Get to keep my hair. You know? yeah. Look at that hair. Why would you want to get rid of it? Look at this. Yeah, man. So, you know, seriously. Oh, my God. Come so, on, well, let's put our heads together and make a button. I'll donate yeah. some for you guys. <laughs> Yeah, right? Yeah. All right, so parting thoughts, parting thoughts. If you're going to play music, do it for the right reasons. That's all I got to say to kids out there, because it's a different age. Don't do it for the fame. You don't want to be the hip-hop stars. Be somebody important. Come on, give me a Pink Floyd. Somebody, please. Right. So, so, so you're hearing Waylon's take on this, you know, who's been in the game for a long time, you know, and here you are, you know, you're just kind of sort of getting started out. Yep. What do you think of what he has to say? Do you take that to heart? Are you like, nah, <laughs> screw it, man. I'm doing whatever I want, you know? What are, what are some of you thoughts? Do you, I mean, do you really take that to heart? I mean, are you conscious of that or do you I'm, still kind of feel like, ah, fuck it, caution in the wind? Nah, I'll tell you what, I mean, this is definitely a dream come true for me, but... At the same time, I still have bills to pay and have to figure all my life scenarios out. So I'm definitely trying to all right, so you're stick to the right path. You know all right, I mean? so you got a business mind about this. Yeah. You're right. in the wrong business, son. That's a, yep. <laughs> no, it's a brutal one. Still it's a very challenging drums, one. That's awesome. I love drums. So That's awesome. Gotta, That's awesome. Gotta, gotta you playing. deserve the opportunity. Very cool. Yet again. If it ain't working, go away. You know, but at least try it. Don't give up on your dream until you at least try. Yeah. And that, I'm going to make sure they always you say. That. you got to try it, right? It might not be for you. Sometimes it turns into a nightmare. Yeah. Mine did. Like, seriously, like, it gets to a point. Sometimes you just make the wrong decisions. That's why I'm going to be there. Like, don't do that. Okay, do it. <laughs> okay, do it. <laughs> now do it. <laughs> well, everybody, I'm here with two-fourths of Killer's Confession. Thank you. You've been Bye. watching Rock Titan TV. Thanks for tuning in. We're out.